Uh, my name is Mackenzie Atwood. You might know me as MK Atwood on the internet or as the host of the official Steven Universe podcast. Um, and I am really excited because today we're going to have a ton of the cast come out and talk. So uh, first up, let's bring out Dee Dee Magno Hall, the voice of the world. Him. 
in a way that might motivate him that isn't that's what I like about what the way she writes is that it's not it's not sad or pathetic or morose. It's hopeful, and that's the message you want to believe. And so the truth is, I get these scripts and I get these speeches, and then I go have to cry in a room by myself, and then I have to recover and then record it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it all out before you yeah, go in the mood. But she really just captures that. Just. Um, the size of Rose and everything just, you know, ironically, an earth mother is the way I think of her, even though, well, she is kind of an earth mother because that's what she wants to save you, even though she's not from here. Right. But that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Um, earth mom. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember your first records? Like, I, I'm assuming oh, that you could, question. not all of them were yeah. at the same time. Uh, I was actually still in the womb, so no. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, yeah, we. I, I actually have clearer memories of um, when we went back to do ADR on the original pilot. So technically the second record, because that's when I found out that the show was picked up. Right, right before from the studio teacher of all people was like, oh, congratulations! I'm like, on what exactly? Like, you got a cartoon! I'm like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> I feel like somebody should have given me a heads up, but it was, it was joyous news. Um, so yeah, that that was that's my memory of a second record, but that's that's what stands out in my mind. Excuse me, I have to go and get my dog. He's, he's right there, and I want to wake Like, it goes immediately into, like, 
the height of drama of this woman who's having the baby and delivering this message to her child. <laughs> I didn't know this was what I was signing up for. It was very intense. But that was like four months later. So I just put in for tiny whale. You might even say it was a whale of a reveal. <laughs> yourself off stage. <laughs> okay, that's that's amazing. I I, I love that. Um, so Dee, you kind of talked about how your character changed from the original perception of your role, like becoming more outgoing and uh, expressive. Um, what about for the rest of you guys? How did your character change from uh, your first impression of them when you got the part to when you started actually recording, and then to like now, I guess. I can't really sum that up in a short period of time because, yeah. I mean, Steven has changed as much as I've changed in the same period of time because it was the same period of our lives that we were, like, um, aging through. It's, so, um, yeah, I mean, just to say, like, growing up alongside Steven has been monumental in how I, I played Steven and how I go through my life as a person. Um, and so, so intertwined, and it's hard to really like sum up in a few words. I think. The story's not over. It is not over. Um, I think for me, uh, I I aged backwards on the series. So my beginning on the series was the end of Rose, and then everything after that was slowly going backwards until I became this sort of like teenager <laughs> in the form of the other character, um, and. Uh, and so that was interesting, and, and Rebecca was really instrumental in, like, she has to have elements of Rose, but she's also kind of um, an impatient teenager, you know, who's rebelling against her, you know, authorities. And, um, and then the other thing is just the slow reveal in the show, but also to us as actresses, of the relationship between Rose and Pearl. Yes. It literally kills me, and I love Dee Dee so much that it was. Like, I, love I love those scenes so. Oh, that's what that, oh, that's what that, oh my gosh, like, my 
brain was exploding, but it was pretty. Reading the script in script form, it goes, and then she goes inside the pro, and then she goes inside, and so like just keeping track of how many times she's gone in and just reading it, I had to, I had to see it to really go exactly. Yeah, like I was now like, oh, I get it. Okay, no, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing writing, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. What about you guys? What was your reaction? Um, as actors or as characters? As actors, like just from finding it out and being like, oh my gosh, yeah. So as an actor, I found out the night before when they emailed the script. <laughs> right. And that was an adjustment. <laughs> um, and then it was fascinating because then we recorded like 10 months before it aired. And so we did like a couple panels where we didn't say anything, right? Um, and then it aired, and I got hate tweets. What? Um, yeah, people were really angry, and I remember it was right near um, like Mother's Day, and I, I sent out like a, a, an image of like all the moms, you know, Happy Mother's Day, everybody, and people were like, "You're the worst mother ever," and I'm like, oh, "Okay, okay." But at the same time. We had then recorded another couple episodes that weren't going to air for a while, and I knew a lot would be explained, but it, I was never mad about the angry tweets, um, except that I did want to say, I'm just an actress who's reading lines. <laughs> I just need my SAG insurance. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> tier one. But, <laughs> tier one. But at the same time, I loved the passion. And I also love, after everything, that it was a shock to the audience. And even people who knew and guessed did not know how it happened or how the shattering took place and who shattered whom and, and all of that. And I just thought, bravo to Rebecca. Like her, I love her. They're amazing. For sure. Uh, the, the, my, yeah, my reaction was kind of similar. I just, I just wanted to say, it was like, a, hello? Um, the, my, uh, I wanted to ask about more about Change Your Mind. Um, do you guys have a favorite moment that stuck out from the episode, or, you know, the hour-long episode? I, I have to say the embrace, the Steven embrace. Yes. Is, is, our, is our fan artist that turned it into a pin here? Yes. Yeah, oh, she's amazing. Don't I love it. Brought me, brought me the same version of it. It's oh absolutely incredible. Just beautiful. One of my favorite parts, I think, is when Yellow Diamond falls to her, um, her knees and she's like, Blue, stop using your powers on me. And Blue's like, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> this is called emotion. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I really like the doing the She's Gone scream. Um, yes! That was the meme! The meme! Oh man, what, I don't even remember what the edit was of. It's, it's over, it, isn't it? What's that? It's like it's. Oh yeah, it's. Um, it's over, isn't it? And then you know the the part where you sing and she's gone. Somebody edited it together. <laughs> she's gone. You should know better than I would. I know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you won and she shows you, and she loves you, and she's gone! <laughs> I sounded more like a rooster doing it. I don't want to scare my dog. It's like those goat memes, you know? Where like that like, goat comes in at the end of Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite moment? Oh, my gosh. That it's all... Uh, it's the whole thing because it's it's all these different fingers of everything that has been developed so for so many years over so many episodes and it comes together but not in a neat little bow because the world isn't a neat little bow and that's what I love about about Rebecca and this show too is that it is complicated um, and uh, and that's 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 everything about that episode but yeah God. I mean when's the last time you had these kind of emotional feelings? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Bionicles. <laughs> it moved you? R.I.P. <laughs> um, the three of us are like, what? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be really I didn't watch Bionicles either, so I'm waiting. I'm Mackenzie, waiting. I didn't either. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, occasionally, but like, I, didn't, I didn't follow the story. <laughs> all right, all right. 
Um, so uh, we also got a lot of the diamonds in Change Your Mind, and I mean just in general in the last season. Uh, so I wanted to ask, who's your favorite? Diamond? Yeah. Oh, pink. Woo! All right. White. <laughs> Always white. Why? Why? Why, why, why diamond? Yeah, elaborate. I better like her or else I'm going to get like yeeted off the planet by her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fear-based respect. Okay, okay. I also, her character designs from the moment Rebecca showed them to me, like, way in advance. That's a, uh, yeah, that, that was just the transfixed by her. Um, yeah. The whole concept of, like, taking over her pearl and, and like, speaking through her, it's super freaky. Mm -hmm. I just really like that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. She's got great shoes, too. <laughs> Pink, Pink Diamond has the shoe game down, for sure. That's true. Blue. I like yellow. Oh. I like you. Oh, okay, okay. Sauna gang. What do you what do you like about yellow? Um, I mean hashtag Patty LaPoe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That should be everybody's answer. Let's be right. I mean it's yeah. I mean every all Christine Amberson. I mean everybody's yeah. yeah. so, answer. Um, in New York, I study with a teacher named Joan Later, and I walk in for my lesson one day, and I'm there like five minutes early, and I'm just waiting in her little hallway, and I'm hearing this voice in there. I'm like, oh my god. And I've met a lot of people, but I just started fangirling because, you know, it's Patti LuPone, and that was the voice I grew up with. Boy loves you, understands you, as one of you, and thought, oh, could he love me? Like, if hey, was the be all end all. And so when I found out that Patti was playing yellow, I just thought, amazing. And Rebecca, you guys have seen interviews with Rebecca. She's so soft-spoken, and she's so calm, and I was so excited. I was in for a record for Pink, and I got to hear some of Patty's stuff, and we sat down on this couch, and she's like, um, I have an idea for casting for White, and I just want to know what you thought. And then she said, Christine Emerson, and I'm like, oh. like, you have to understand, Broadway's a really small world, and we don't get to work much outside of Broadway. And the fact that she even knew who Christine Ebersole was, and I'm like, and I've worked with Christine, I'm like, oh, she would be amazing because she's not this obvious choice. Like, she's not, you know, God, all the time. Like, she has that, but she's so soft-spoken and so, you know, and I, anyway. So I think my favorite diamond is uh, Rebecca Sugar. <laughs> Honestly, like, I, uh, as far as, you know, casting choices goes on a production side, I've, I've never met someone with, with an ear like her. It is uncanny um, how, how much she nails every single casting decision. And it's a team effort, um, but she, she comes to the table with these amazing ideas every single time, and usually, usually has a gift. Like, Nicki Minaj, like, that's such, like, a... Come on! <laughs> casting choice, but it, it, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's totally the vibe. Yeah. Um, what you said reminded me of, of something Rebecca said on the podcast about uh, like musical theater being really similar to voice acting. Like, or you know, not similar, but if you're good at one, then it helps you be good at the other. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I was so grateful that this show is so full of music, and I knew um, that. Well, for for our audition, we had we all had to sing the theme song. Um, so, I, I mean, I love, my background is singing, and so, like, I love that this show is so musical, and all of the songs, I mean, like, the, the genres of music that is throughout the shows, uh, I just love that there's so many different kinds of songs, different kinds of music, uh, but it's always been such a, a favorite part of the show for me, is to be able to sing, so I'm just grateful to be on a show that's so full of love and love. Music. <laughs> I love the music. I think to be a good voice actor, you just have to be a good actor. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I haven't done a lot of musical theater, but what strikes me about it is that it's it's really an ensemble often, and that's how voice acting is too. It really is a team effort, and especially with Rebecca, she makes it that way. We get to record together, um, sure. which doesn't always happen for every VO project. So um, I mean, maybe. Yeah. My first voiceover job was because I was a Broadway actress. They hadn't, at Disney, had an actress who was both the singing voice and speaking voice of a heroine in a long time. And so when they were auditioning for Hercules, they really wanted somebody who was the same actress. 
And so they went to the Broadway world, and I ended up booking the gig, and I was doing Beauty and the Beast during the day, or I was recording Hercules during the day, I was doing Beauty and the Beast at night, and what struck me about the voiceover work was you don't have your expressions, you don't have your body language, everything has to come through your voice. And it was like by my second session, it occurred to me that Honestly, anybody past the 10th row also does not have my facial expressions. Like, I think being a voiceover actress made me a better stage actress because my voice became more expressive um, because of what you have to provide in a booth. And, uh, and so that was exciting, but I totally also concur with what Dee Dee was saying. When I, because I'm not on the show very much, I hear the stuff as it, as it airs, or like when I got the album, right, when the first album came out, and to hear that Rebecca can write in every single genre of music, from It's Over It, Isn't It, which is such an American songbook, Gershwin kind of song, to like the stuff that Greg sings, to the jingles, Cookie Cat, and, you know, and then Estelle's song, and then like the pop, you know, bubblegum pop music. Like, it, what other show does that? And has a cast that can perform it so like they do. So I don't know, it's, it's pretty miraculous. <laughs> I got my start in stage acting as well as a, as a, a very, very small youngster in St. Louis. Um, and that's, that's always what I recommend to people who want to be voice actors is, have you done theater yet? Um, and even if you have, go do more. Uh, community theater is where I started and then, you know, did as much theater as I could in Missouri and then at a certain point decided I wanted to do film after getting a lucky scene in a movie that came through town. And um, I'm always grateful for that base. And I, I, whenever I'm like losing touch with my love for the craft, theater is where I go back to in 2015. Excuse me. <laughs> He's cold. Uh, in 2015, I did a, uh, uh, not a musical, just, just a, a play um, with a theater company that I work with in Los Angeles. Like a like tiny, you know, 99 seater, just like art house show that had never been done before. Um, it was the first time that played and performed, and it was it was a like really dark, grueling show, and like really hard. My, like my mother had to walk out of it at one point. Um, it's absolutely brutal, brutal show. But that's the kind of stuff that I, I relish as an actor. That, that we all do as actors, really. Um, and that reignited my my love for it at a time where I, I felt like I was floundering. So that's that's always like home base for me if I if I need that. You are great in that. You were great, Matthew. Together and we both kept being like in the dark. We were like, <laughs> yeah. I went to see it too with my husband, and it was tough to watch. But you're—I mean—it just shows what a great actor you are too, and divert. It was a play that dealt with themes of severe abuse um, against children, and I, I was playing one of the children. Um, so obviously, not exactly sunshine and rainbows, but that's that's the kind of material that I look for. At least I know a lot of other actors do, just because it's takes you to those places and that's what we like, like to do as performers. Right. We used to we used to get really happy when there would be less people in in the, the audience after intermission because that, that meant not because we knew we were putting on a good show, that meant that people were emotionally moved by it to the point where they, they had to step out of it. So we were accomplishing our jobs. Very twisted, but that's a unique benchmark. <laughs> yeah, right. Normally that's like, oh man, like we really stunk it up in the first act, didn't we? But yeah. I stayed. Back. I stayed for the second act. <laughs> um, okay, one other question for you guys. Um, how have your interactions with uh, Steven Universe fans at conventions or wherever, uh, how have those differed from uh, like the responses to other projects that you've been a part of? Oh gosh. Um, I, I, I just came back from Orlando, Florida. Um, for a 30-year anniversary, I see you, Rick. 30-year <laughs> anniversary for the Mickey Mouse Club, a show that I did many years ago, probably before a lot of you were born. <laughs> but um, I got to connect with some fans from that, like way back in the day. And then I also am coming here and meeting a whole new generation of fans for a show that, um, I mean, the two have nothing to do with each other. But I feel like the general consensus is that there's just so much love out there and as somebody, as an actor, as a performer, and somebody that's been in this business for, uh, for, for a little, little minute, um, I, I just so, I, I'm so appreciative. I'm so grateful to meet you all face to face and to hear your stories 
and to see how this show has affected your life in such a beautiful and positive way. And um, I, I just, it's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful one-on-one -on -one connection and I'm, I'm just grateful. So we, you know, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So I, we thank you.
Um, it has almost no overlap with this kind of fandom here, um, but it, it's so passionate in a different way. Um, yet it's yet it's the same, and I, I have to shout them out because they've always been really good to me. I haven't been a regular on the show in five, six years, but I still get you know fan mail and, and messages about it. So, all right, I have one last question. Um, I'm not allowed to ask for spoilers about the Steven Universe movie coming this fall on Cartoon Network. You mean the Steven Universe gritty reboot? <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that one, but uh, the, I, I asked last time uh, how excited should we be on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, so I want to ask again, just because Susan's here now and maybe your answers have changed, you know, I just want to gauge, so where are we at? Oh my goodness! <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Thanks for the um, In the words of Pearl, you should be boodles. You should have boodles of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a fan of the series, I'm obsessed and cannot wait until everybody has seen it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to follow all that up. I feel a little small now. <laughs> it's it's really good, guys. <laughs> we finished Change Your Mind, and they're like, "Yo, we're gonna do a movie." I'm like, "About what?" And then I got there, I'm like, "Oh, duh. like that's." <laughs> <laughs> this may, why would I ever? Why would I ever wonder if Rebecca didn't know what to do? Of course she knows what to do. It's amazing. Stop jumping. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, uh, that's all I got. So let's get some fan Q and A. We have two mics, and you guys can just make lines and uh, just try and keep them short so we can get through as many as possible. Okay. Wow. That